Hi everyone. So originally I wanted to give you a tour in this presentation throughout the open source engineering landscape. But due to the change of format and time constraints, I will focus on one particular project where everything is finally coming together. So um, it's the open source of Mars Scanner OZ1. And at this workshop, all files will be made publicly available. So we are very much excited about this huge milestone and want to show you what's the current status quo and where we are heading to next. I have nothing to disclose. So in 2016, we started with the Open Source Imaging Initiative, which had a very ambitious goal to basically build an open source MR scanner, uh, which we believe is necessary to grant access uh, to this wonderful technology to many more people. So there was a lot of support of many individuals and institutions publishing their work as open source hardware and open source software. Uh, and you can get a good overview on various projects on uh, opensourceimaging.org. Uh, uh, in this first stage, however, most of these efforts were relatively disconnected, um, but they were very important puzzle pieces uh, leading to a complete open source MRI. Uh, then in 2019, we had some first in vivo imaging uh, of uh, prototype scanners. And this was the Leiden Dev collaboration that uh, was a very important uh, milestone with first in vivo images at around 50 millitesla, uh, which looked very promising. Uh, and this system, as you heard from uh, Tom O'Reilly in the previous talk, was further developed um, to where we are today, which is the OZ1 system, uh, which is nearly completely based on open source, comp open source components. So now these puzzle pieces are finally coming together and we can start working, working on a single system and uh, communicating in one direction by performing a multi-center evaluation of these systems uh, and further improving them together. So all the files of OZ1 will be available under this uh, following link here. And what we mean by open source documentation is that basically all the development files that you need to further improve the system, such as electronic circuits, um, cut files, etc., uh, are available. All the files that you need to reproduce the system easily, such as assembly instructions or bill of materials, uh, and also all the, all the software and, and some other usage files that are needed to, to use and operate the system um, are available in this repository. And if not available at this moment, we will uh, push it very soon to this repository. So let's have a look at the system components of the slow fit uh, MR scanner. And starting off with the magnet, which is the most challenging to reproduce. So here you can see on the left side is the first build of this magnet, um, which was done in Leiden. So this photos, photograph is also in Leiden. Uh, and then we came over from um, Berlin to Leiden with, with our own uh, components, so slightly different materials, etc., cetera, um, to, to rebuild the system. And um, on the left-hand side, you can see the specifications. Um, so the system consists of this 25 rings with more than 4,000 12 millimeter cubic magnets. Um, and of course it can be built by experts as you can see here. But the good news is that um, so this, this rebuild was, was done basically by many people. Uh, so many different hands, many possible systematic errors, etc. There were other uh, challenges not only Corona, as you can see here, um, but there were also other challenges such as um, uh, faulty magnets, um, um, different material tolerances, etc., etc. Uh, but the good news is that after um, building this magnet, mapping the field, uh, we reach a very similar uh, field strengths of this 48 millitesla, uh, which is also um, coming out of simulations. Uh, we have this um, homogeneity below 3000 ppm over 20 centimeter in diameter. So this is this is promising. The head fits inside this uh, 30 centimeter inner diameter bore. And the whole system in the end is around uh, 100 kg, with, which makes it relatively easy to pack into a camper uh, and drive 700 kilometers um, from Leiden back to Berlin uh, without the system being damaged. So this is um, pretty encouraging. All right, so after the magnet, let's have a look at the RF system where we have a console, which at this stage is not completely open source, at least not open source hardware. So um, uh, currently this uh, Kia 2 is being used as a, um, for, for pulse generation. 
Um, but there is a cheaper option, which is using a red pitaya, uh, which is a software defined radio. Uh, and this together with an Okra One board um, to drive the gradients uh, and some software such as Okra or Marcos, uh, which is also presented in this um, workshop, uh, can be used as a console. Uh, then we have an RF power amplifier, which is uh, an open source hardware design uh, by TU Delft, and it has one kilowatt peak power, a 10% duty cycle, so um, more than enough power uh, uh, that is needed uh, for the system. Um, and there are several RF coils uh, available, um, basically solenoid coils, so you, you have already some 3D printed former. Um, uh, that you can you can use and unwind your your RF calls. Then for the gradient system, we have a three-channel uh, gradient power amplifier, also an open source hardware design, with uh, plus minus 15 amps per channel and duty cycle 30%, uh, and which can um, be used with um, uh, different uh, uh, gradient calls. And uh, the gradient calls are based on an open source software gradient design tool, uh, which then is transformed into a, a CAT model uh, where you can see this, this uh, wiring passes and you can 3D print that. Uh, you can uh, put in some wire and glue in some wire. Um, and then you have a gradient coil. And this you can nicely insert into this magnet, as you can see here. Uh, screw it in that it, uh, nothing is loose. Uh, and then basically um, have your X, Y, and Z uh, uh, gradient coils. So as you can see, we now have all the components necessary to build an open source hardware MR system. And more importantly, um, it can be reproduced. So now we can start working together in a larger group to further improve the imaging performance um, of these scanners. But before doing that, just a few words on open source, what it actually means. Uh, and the underlying licenses that will be used throughout the project. So open source software is software that can be freely accessed, used, changed, and shared by anyone, and open source hardware similarly grants everyone the right to study, modify, distribute, and make the designs. So these designs can and they should be also used for commercial purposes, because in the end, what we do want is we want to have certified scanners that are on the market um, and that can be used to treat patients. Uh, so in order to, to really guarantee these rights of open source, uh, we need open source licenses that are applied alongside the publication of the files um, around this project. So for OZ1, we will use <coughs> copyleft licenses. This means that for software, uh, the GNU GPL version 3 or similar, and for hardware, the CERN OHL uh, version 2, the re weekly reciprocal version. Um, and what it basically means is that if changes are being made to current designs, uh, this basically ensures that the changes are released under the same terms and conditions or the same license. Um, so the recommendation um, to the community is to also use uh, such licenses or similar licenses um, for contributions to the project to be, to be most compatible with the project. So there are a lot of things that will be happening um, technically um, next, such as um, a cloud-based user interface um, with some open source pulse sequence development and open data formats, uh, imaging platform where also open source reconstruction tools will be used and open source post-processing to basically have the whole pipeline of image generation um, uh, a transparent, and this has a lot of advantages, um, um, not only for reproducibility, but also for for testing of of different um, different algorithms, etc. And we will also push um, documentation that that goes in accordance with medical device regulation. Um, at least as much as possible, so from the development and um, a production stage, uh, we will also push it to, to the public space. Uh, because the more information we have there, the easier it will be to have the transition towards a certified product. And then, of course, on hardware side, there are also a lot of um, um, improvements or replacements um, of um, open source components that can be performed at this stage. So looking at the bigger picture, 
we are now entering the multi-center evaluation stage. Multiple of these OZ1 scanners are currently being built, and we can start then to improve these systems in a bigger group with more resources available. The idea is to keep a healthy and transparent open source core alive so that potentially anyone who wants to rebuild the systems or use them to evaluate innovations, etc., can do so. And at the same time, we want to grow a business ecosystem around this project to facilitate distribution of these scanners or hardware modules because not everyone wants to build these systems from scratch. The more information we can provide to the public space, the easier a transition to, act to actual products, uh, and then the lower the prices for purchasing and maintenance of these systems. So hopefully in some four to five years, we can reach the clinical stage and can start to demonstrate the real value open source MR scanners can have for the healthcare system. Uh, it's a big experiment. It's doing things differently, um, but we believe it's worthy to do so. So having said that, a lot has happened and a lot more will happen. If you are from academia or industry, or if you are a hardware or a software person, if you are from a resource rich or a resource poor setting, just join our efforts and let us demonstrate together that an open source approach not only builds bridges, but that collaboration is stronger and more sustainable than the current competitive model. Uh, here you can find some information on how you can get engaged. Uh, and if you are in London at the ISMRM this year, uh, we're going to bring an OC1 scanner over. So um, um, looking forward to see you there. There are so many people that deserve a huge thank you for their contribution uh, to this open source universe. Fortunately, there is not enough time, um, but I would like to highlight uh, a tool that that did a tremendous push. And uh, this is uh, Tom O'Reilly and Andrew Webb. So without them, we wouldn't be at this stage uh, where we are at the moment. And uh, I'm really excited to see uh, what's going to happen in the next years. Thank you.